On today's episode of Path Monk Presents, I got a very special guest who's joining today. Please welcome Garth Fraser. So Garth is the VP of Sales Marketing Enablement at Birch Street Systems. They are a leading provider of cloud-based procurement and payment solutions for the hospitality industry. He has over 20 years of experience in hospitality sales and marketing and is passionate about helping clients achieve success through, through secure data-driven growth strategies. Garth, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm really excited to learn more about you, what you guys are currently doing at Birch Street Systems and overall what you guys have in store. So thanks so much for taking the time to join us today. Sure, Maria. Thanks for having me here. And I appreciate Pathmonk uh, reaching out. I'm looking forward to the conversation. Likewise. So am I. So for all of our audience and listeners out there, tell us what exactly is Birch Street Systems and what is the solution that you guys sell for your clients overall? Well, appreciate the question. Birch Street Systems is the leader in hospitality technology, technology solutions for procurement. We were called the Amazon of hospitality by our second customer. I'm talking to you today in a casino of our first customer, uh, Hilton. I'm in Resorts World Las Vegas right now talking to you. But Birch Street Systems has been around 21 years. We were founded by Sushral Garg. A, a genius from New Delhi who created a custom software-based system that Hilton wanted to use. And they said, Sushil, what's the name of your company? And he, they caught him off guard. He, he hadn't named the company. He looked out the window of his office and he lived on Birch Street. And he said, the company's name is Birch Street. And from that moment on, uh, Hilton remained a customer. But today we are in nine of the top 10 hotel global brands. We are with seven of the top 10 hospitality third month party management companies, and they are the leaders who manage the hotels and resorts. And so we automate those back end processes and save hospitality entities valuable money and time, Maria. So that's virtual systems uh, at its core. Wow, that's incredible. And thanks for giving me the insight as well. So no now that we've discussed this, my next question is, since your client or your clients mainly come from the hospitality industry, how has that affected the company, especially coming out of COVID and, you know, essentially pivot a lot of, you know, companies to be agile and adapt for what's uh, coming? What is it that Birch Tree Systems is now focusing on with coming out of that era? Can you give us an insight onto that? Sure, Maria. Th that is a question, as you and I were talking before we, we went on air here, that's not asked enough. I mean, we have to face the times in which we live. In hospitality, we've gone through the most horrific shutdown in our industry's experience. For a couple of years, we went dark. Uh, the labor disappeared and all the top brands pulled back. Birch Street Systems shuttled down like many of our competitors did as well and kept the lights on, kept supporting our existing customer base. Coming out of two years of that and seeing the challenges with supply chain as we do and inflation across the board and that migration of labor, that has been such a game changer for us. We have been invested in by Serent uh, Capital out of San Francisco and Parthenon Capital out of, of Boston, Massachusetts. Why? Because they see the value in what the solutions we provide. We automate those manual accounting processes, which frees up the labor, which saves the money and ensures that our customers know what they have on hand, when they have it, and that they can purchase that from a reliable marketplace built in for them in a custom fashion. So for us, it's been think anew change with the times. And what have we seen, Maria? We've seen those top leading hospitality brands make more money than they've ever made. We have seen so many new people come into the hospitality vertical. We're having to train them more and more. They're coming from all across the spectrum. And so we're seeing such an invigorated change, which is why we're excited about it. Hospitality is coming back. People are spending more at hotel rooms. They're spending more on food and beverage. And so we want to make sure that that customer experience as the ecosystem of Birch Street Systems provides them that highest quality meal, that highest quality linen and sheets and carpet, all that they're experiencing all the way down to their food and beverage in their hospitality uh, journey. So it's an exciting time. There's still a lot of work to do in ensuring that the industry, which before COVID was far too much manually based in processes, and, and that's where Birch Street Systems brings you out, frees up that labor and time and ensures that we mitigate the problems of fraud and waste 
they're just too prevalent out there in, in our vertical. So excited about what we can provide, but just doing it even better for our customers and our new customers. Yeah, definitely. So it's, you know, it's a great where now coming out of the pandemic, uh, Birch Street Systems has been able to, you know, pivot and adapt. So now it's more, you guys are in a scale up uh, environment now. Like definitely. Very, very much so. I, I, I told you be, before we came on for the interview, I feel like I'm at a 21 year old startup and you, yeah. and you left and it's true. That's yeah. not just a trite statement. There's an excitement when, when that's occurring. And so it, it's Maria, it's like the world had a reset button hit on it, particularly in hospitality. And so it does challenge you to think differently. Now we have robots serving people food in the hotel, going up to their room and delivering that we have robots delivering linens that there's, it's an industry where you can come and scale in an unprecedented fashion from an employment perspective. So if you're listening and watching this and you're considering moving into a vertical, hospitality is a cool vertical for you to jump into. So thanks for the question, Maria. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like, you know, this isn't that hasn't been like talked about a lot. And I figured with providing your insight, considering you've been in the industry for 20 years, you'd have a lot to, uh, to share with our audience and seeing, you know, where the industry is heading and what to overall uh, be prepared for. So thanks again for giving us insights on that. Really appreciate it. So, Not at all. So now we're going to uh, uh, change topics. So essentially, I want to ask you about the website. So mm -hmm. in your own words, what would you say are the strengths of the Birch Street Systems website and where are there opportunities for room for improvement as well? The strengths of the past two years of my time here at Birch Street Systems are we have overcome its inherent weaknesses. I came to Birch Street Systems from the ninth largest company in, in the United States that were whitelisted. That, that means President Trump ensured that they had to provide their product to the marketplace during the pandemic. And so when I came to Birch Street Systems, I was a contractor with that company. I realized, Maria, what could be done. The, the sheer potential to scale. And so it was a complete ground up revision. We, we took possession of the website, the marketing department did. That was unprecedented. They called me the guy who threw around sticks of dynamite at Birch Street to get stuff done at the time. And it worked and it worked well. What was core at it is just redoing the entire site, ensuring that the SEO was the, the way it needed to be, making sure we had a much broader global footprint, that our call to actions were clear, that the language we were speaking was understandably universal, that we were compliant in all range of verticals, whether it was with for handicapped users or whatever the case may be, making sure we're compliant with all the regulations from a, um, GDRP to HIPAA to all that we see going on globally and ensuring that our, our branding and our identity, who and what is Birch Street? What do we do? And so when you're listening to our video explainers, that's my voice. I wrote those scripts because I, I want, that's how I got the job. I sold the revision of the website to Birch Street Systems. And they said, yep, come in and do what you've been doing at this other company. And that's what helped us scale and generate uh, this year over last year, 163% more traffic and 65 to 70% of that is organic. So there's a lot of our customers and prospects who know who we are. Our ICPs are crucial and there are only so many of them, you know, four or five, um, you know, CEO, CFO, CIO, the decision makers of the software, heads of procurement. And so the soft, the, the website has become a clean, clean information source, lead driver, prospect developer qualifier of leads, ensuring that MQLs come over the fence. You know what I'm talking about, you marketers, and are kissed and loved and hugged by our foreboding salespeople and turn into SQLs, that sales qualified lead, and move along the pathway all the way through to redline and close. So it's fundamental. It's vital. It's the front door, Maria. If you do not have your front door painted with a little hole on it so you can see who's out there with a doorbell, how do you know what's coming? How do you know your Amazon packages are going to get delivered on time? Our website is crucial, and we're always looking for ways to optimize it. And you supply one of those over at Pathmark, Maria. So that's crucial for, for me and others who are interviewed like this to sit up and take notice of where IA is taking us and where we can optimize and streamline such as solutions you provide. So I've got my eye on you guys. Yeah, yeah definitely. And especially, too, as we were discussing before the interview, it's 
it's very exciting, I think, especially for Patma, where we get to be a part of these conversations for where AI is heading right. and being able to help, you know, influence the in in industry and, you know, being thought leaders in our own space. Yes, we still have a lot to learn, just like anybody else does, but being able mm -hmm. to provide that guidance for a lot of people in different industries who are who have been struggling to to grasp and to uh, embrace AI, because there's been a lot of discussions right. where, you know, marketers and use and uh, people from other industries have been afraid that AI is going to take away their job when at the end of the day, no, it's, it's there to to help to make your job easier, but for you to be able to output more. And essentially, AI can only do so much, but it still needs a human element. And that's what a lot of people need to remember where, you know, it's here to be able to to help you not to take away the job because AI can only do so much. But at the end of the day, we still, we still need that human touch overall. We still need to have that human element, especially with, you know, nowadays with being remote and not many companies right. yeah, being in person. So that is also really crucial as well. That's a great point. And it's so topical over here. I was just watching a documentary last night when I flew in about this and they're all interviewing the key leaders. We know who they are, the Rat Pack of PayPal and so forth. And those who have generated the new uh, drama that's unfolding in Silicon Valley. But we can, you're right, Maria. I think it's a general principle if we don't flip out and we understand it's not, it's not the thing, it's the usage of the thing. I can hurt you with a fork and a knife, but you still need a fork and a knife. And so let's, you're right. We have to have that human governance over any technology, whether it's PathMonk or Birch Street Systems or, you know, the other leading software providers of the world. So good point. Yeah. Thank you. So now we're going to shift gears here and we're going to talk mm -hmm. about you as a leader. So with being at, um, you know, Bridge Street uh, Systems and being the vice president, what are some things that uh, you have endured within the role, but also any tips or insights as well for our audience who, uh, you know, were some aspire to be in your shoes one day? What are things that you could share with them and things that you've seen within the industry? Well, I appreciate the question. And you know, I'm, I'm in my early 50s now, and so I've seen a lot of episodes of life. And to, to come to the company at that pivot point that we'd already talked about with the private equity emergence and the scaling upward is, is so exciting. It's great to be a part of something that you know is changing the world. As a leader, um, this is a hard world. We have all sorts of challenges from wars to supply chain, inflation, you know, political instability. We have to be happy. We have to have have a proper understanding of how to be happy and have a goal. And so for me as a leader, what's core is making sure there's a work-life balance and that you work to live. You don't <laughs> live to work yeah. and that you, you, you want to do what you love. And then you're passionate about it and you believe in it. And then you believe in the sale. And there's nothing more disingenuous than an insincere marketing or sales pitch because they don't believe in the product and we believe in the product and so at the company for me personally i was i had a fantastic uh chief sales officer who uh, brought me in worked with me scaled me as I, I came in early on as a consultant to the role i have today and they gave me a lot of freedom they said show us where we need to scale bring us what you just learned at this you know, Fortune 10 company you've just worked with. And then that's going to put us at a different level. So as we go forward even more with the Parthenon and Seren Capital, we can add to that. And so I'm very encouraged by the conversations that I'm having now with our new CMO and our other thought leaders and CEO, that they recognize all the hard work that's been put in to the, the flow of the funnel and where we need to go. So I, I don't want to sit here and say I know everything because I don't. Smartest people in the rooms are the ones who listen. They're the ones who get smarter people than them to work with them. They're not always the smartest person. That's the people around them. So I'm a big believer in that. And I'm a big believer in understanding global teams, understanding the way the world is moving on all four corners of the earth. I'm from Australia. I've lived in America most of my life. I've traveled the world, but we are a world out there, not just 50 some states of it. So that's crucial to remember too, I think in any form of leadership, but particularly in sales and marketing. Yeah, exactly. And I love how you capitalized on, you know, being very global nowadays, because that's one of the, you know, crucial things in order to be accessible with any, any role, being able to, you know, work with, you know, your teams from EMEA, APAC, LATAM, Absolutely. And being able to bring, you know, these, uh, 
decisions and be able to create uh, these, uh, whether it's product descriptions, these campaigns, whatever it may be, but being able to, to have a globalized mindset allows for you to like go beyond borders and really be able to touch audiences and reach, reach their touch points to where you can be able to position yourself as you were explaining earlier, a thought leader and really resonating with uh, the with uh, these, uh, not only your current clients, but your process, like uh, potential prospects as well that will turn into clients at the end of the day. Absolutely, Maria. Really appreciating their background, their culture. And you bring up a great point. Each of the regions you just described has come out of the pandemic at different levels. You're okay. seeing APAC come out now. That's a real greenfield. Yeah. Look at what's happened in the Middle East. It's astonishing to what greenfield's there. You've got LATAM coming out a little slower. And of course, North America coming out along with um, the other regions, you know, at a, at a faster pace. So I appreciate what you're saying. It's always crucial to to reinforce that. And that just pivots back to your, your flowing question about the importance of the website and messaging. And we are a global company, so it's always essential to keep that global perspective. Yeah, definitely. So now my next question is, what is the one piece of advice that you would give yourself if you could go back and restart your journey today? Is there anything that you would de- do differently? Is there any advice that you would give to you know any of our <laughs> listeners out there that are currently feeling stagnant within you know, what they're doing or knowing where to pivot next or where to jump um, into next? That, that's a good question. On the personal level, growing up in Australia, always being near the water surfing, put on sunscreen. I have overcome <laughs> multiple instances of skin cancer. Do oh. not use use sunscreen. And I live in Florida now, so I'm a little sensitive to it. But I can't take that back. But that's what I changed as a child. But as far as work goes, Maria, great question. I'd have to look back and say, over the what's happened with the world. I mean, I, I was born in the early 70s. We're coming out of the Vietnam War. We're, we're in this Cold War. I'm on the bottom of the earth in Australia, uh, starting in with a company called News Corp. They're, they're called Fox now. And the Berlin Wall comes down. The whole world changes. We move into the 90s and this dot-com explosion and suddenly we're all using these cheesy modems that take forever to get you to a, a web page and these big monitors and and we've got big phones and and then we move again into the streamlining of what came with Steve Jobs and the and Bill Gates metamorphosis and what's happened the past 20 some years I'd have to say take risks I have four children all three of them are out of college take risks. They're taking risks and they work for some of the larger companies. Why? Because they take risks. Don't let anyone tell you you're too small. You're too short. You're too thin. You're too fat. You're not smart enough. You can accomplish anything like Marty McFly was told in Back to the Future. If you put your mind to it, just put your mind to it and work hard. And so if I could go back in time, I'd take more risks. Definitely. And I love too how you really emphasize on that because I feel especially with now as for a lot of marketers who are, you know, coming fresh out of university or mm-hmm. you know, are getting ready to enter the work field, work, workforce very soon, or just even those who have been in the workforce for some time now and they're, they're anxious or nervous to take those risks. I love how you right. really to take those risks. And I agree with you too. Um, at least like for me, where I'm still very young in my career, I've got a lot to learn and grow, which is great, but I'm grateful for, being able to push myself out of my comfort zone, which I have, which I have right. been doing, and it's led me to a lot of opportunities that um, I've been able to uh, to take it to t- take uh, take along the way and grow as well. So I agree with you. That's that's the most important thing. And even though it's easier said than done, but the sooner you the sooner you take risks, the more, the easier it will become to make those switches and be pivotal. P- pivotal. Right. Indeed. Good point, Maria. Thank you. So now. We're at the end of our interview today. And I want to thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. But I also want to give you the last word. If anyone were to forget about everything we've talked about in your interview today, what are the main things you want them to remember about Birch Street Systems overall? BirchStreetSystems.com, BirchStreetSystems.com. We're the Amazon of hospitality. We're in nine of the top 10 global brands seven of the top 10 hospitality management companies. And if you want it and you need it, you got to buy it and you got to buy it on Birch Street. 
I want them to walk away with the understanding that we all have to purchase things and we all want them at the best price. And they can accomplish anything in their lives, whether it's in personal purchasing or responsibility in global purchasing. So save money and time, get to the website, learn from Bird Street Systems. That's too much information for you, Maria, but I know <laughs> that they get the point. <laughs> yes, they get the point. But hey, you guys are industry experts and they know where to find you. So thanks they again. Do. Thank you for having me.